Hi, and welcome to the week six lecture. This is about embedding information literacy through course and assignment design and a training the trainer approach to um, embedding information literacy. So really interesting stuff. This is an approach that I think librarians are coming to um, embrace a lot more as they're realizing that just being in a single class session doesn't impact inform student information literacy as much as being involved in the design of the course itself or its assignments. So the outcomes for this week, um, we're going to look at how librarians are embedding information literacy in the curriculum when, when the courses and curricula are being designed. We're going to look at how libraries have been able to get involved in course design. And in this lecture, I'm going to talk about my own experience with that going to look at um, how librarians have influenced research assignments um, as sort of a way to improve student information literacy. And while this sounds like, oh, changing an assignment isn't going to have, make much of a difference, the scaffolding of research skills through well-designed assignments can actually have a tremendous impact on student information literacy and their learning and their success. Um, we're going to look at um, libraries that have taken a train-the-trainer approach, so teaching faculty and or TAs or peer mentors or whatever in an effort to integrate information literacy into the curriculum without necessarily increasing the amount of instruction that we have to do. Um, and then we're going to look at the challenges involved in actually doing this, because while it is a really great thing to do, it can be exceedingly difficult to get faculty sort of think of us as partners in course design and development. And from my experience, it's often the easiest to do that actually with, um, with online courses where faculty are kind of new to that experience, so they're a little more open to having the library involved. So. Why get involved in course design? I kind of already addressed this to some extent, but you know, when you work with a class um, that has already been developed, when a professor contacts you, you know, two weeks before they want the students to come into the library, there's not a lot you're going to be able to do if you see that the assignment is problematic, or if you want to try something interesting that would require adding maybe an additional activity or something. It can be difficult to get faculty to do that because, well, they've already design their class and they're probably not going to want to change it. Um, when you get involved at that course design at that foundational level, you can really help build up the course to contain um, the sort of instruction that is going to help students be successful both in that class and in their academic careers. So, you know, it's really a way to get in, to make a really tremendous impact on a class much more so than we can being involved in a single session. So. Like I said, the great times to do this online, when faculty are starting to teach online, I've found that's when they are most open to this kind of collaboration. Um, when new programs are being developed, that's a good time to say, hey, let me talk to you about how we can embed information literacy into the curriculum to help students become more successful in doing their research assignments. Um, when there's new courses or even new faculty, sometimes that's the time to kind of pop in and say, oh, oh, by the way, as you're developing your course, I'd be more than happy to work with you on X, X, and X, you know. So thinking about ways that we can get in on new courses or with new faculty to um, influence their course design. Um, and also when courses and programs are being redesigned, that is a, you know, just no-brainer, perfect time to kind of get in and um, and work with the faculty on um, embedding information literacy. So I've had the, I'm going to talk about my experiences at um, at Norwich with um, curriculum redesign and with um, redesigning courses and being involved in course design. So the first experience, actually, it's not the first experience I had. Um, it's actually probably the second in this, but. Um, it was for a face-to-face -face class, not an online class, so I thought it was a good example to talk about first. This was um, History 209 was the major um, research methods course that all history majors had to take. So this was kind of the course that librarians would want to be involved in. And yet, we actually 
had never done instruction in it until I became the um, history librarian. And we'd seen the assignments that students had. They had this very difficult assignment where they had to be um, from a certain, represent a certain country um, at the end of World War One at the Paris Peace Conference. So they had to do a lot of really interesting research, like it was a very engaging activity. But at the same time, the research was very daunting, especially when they hadn't had any actual research, any, well, they hadn't had much research instruction on how to use the library, at least. So when two new faculty began to teach the class, um, they were interested in making changes to the design. And because I had good relationships with those two faculty members already, I ended up talking with them about how we could work with them to improve the students um, success in their research and also just improve the general experience in the class and as we got talking they were also interested in um, having the students have experiences with archives and the university's museum so doing some primary research using the stuff that we had in our collections and um, the archives and museum, not surprisingly, were also very eager to work with them. So we worked together to develop a, I believe it was four or five sessions per um, History 209, where we were really embedded into the course with um, activities and assignments. And we were placed in places where students were immediately going to be um, practicing what they what they learned in the sessions. So I think we had three library sessions, an archive session, and a museum session. And it was amazingly valuable. Um, the proof was in the pudding. I mean, you could see the quality of the students' research went increased significantly. And I think it really helped was really a nice experience for them, especially to engage with the archives and the museum, to engage with primary sources can be really exciting. Um, another group I worked with was the Masters of Education program, and this was very different. This was a situation where um, I was actually asked to develop two weeks of, oh, I don't, yeah, I think I said three weeks here. I think it was two weeks, if I'm not mistaken, two weeks worth of course content for the program. So I was able to actually build information literacy instruction into the course through lectures and activities and resources, um, which was really neat. And they didn't know necessarily that a librarian had built that content, but it was, you know, information literacy instruction that was embedded and that I only had to do once, but was used for years and years. For all I know, it could still be um, used at Norwich. Then um, the Masters of Military History program, this was a very research intensive online program um, where students, the military history students, the average age I think was like 50 and they were very, very into doing research for the sake of research. I mean, this was a very excited group of students, but we never initially had a presence in their classes. We, you know, we, were, we had a presence in that we had library resources embedded. We had a presence in that students could contact us through instant messaging and email and all that good stuff, but we didn't have any instruction embedded. Um, and when they were doing a redesign of the first course um, in the Masters of Military History program, we wanted to work with the course designer to embed information literacy. And we were open to doing this in a variety of different ways, but what we ended up doing was um, offering synchronous instruction um, two, two or three times, <coughs> two or three times during the term, during the term, and also um, embedding some activities that would assess the student skills in those areas, and that was really great. Um, I think doing it synchronously might have. While, while it was, I think, better instruction, I think because they had so many sections of the class, it ended up being a little too much for the distance learning librarian who ended up doing this after I left. Um, but I think it w was a great way to embed information literacy into the curriculum. And I think if it did become too much, they could always record those lectures and have students watch them later on. 
So there were lots of options with that. So collaborating with faculty on course design, obviously the pros of that, you can deeply integrate information literacy into a course without really increasing the librarian's commitment um, or time commitment to that course. Um, the negative part is it still does require a lot of time on the front end. You know, you can build it in and it's going to, and, and it can keep going for years and years and years. But it, on the front end, if you're designing something um, where you're not just doing instruction, like in my History 209, in the other ones, it required a lot of time developing those pieces of that course, um, which can be difficult. Um, and the biggest one is many faculty are not going to be open to this type of collaboration. They're going to, they don't think of librarians as partners in pedagogy and trying to get that through to people can be very difficult and take a long time of relationship building as we talked about in the previous two weeks. Um, and also if it's something where you're um, embedding materials that the faculty need to teach. Not every faculty member is going to be comfortable with or interested in actually teaching information literacy. So thinking about, so you're really going to have to cater to the specific needs and issues of the instructors that you're working with. So assignment design, like I said before, is another place where we can really influence student information literacy. I've found in my experience that a lot of student issues with um, developing information literacy skills come from the assignment itself. Um, I did a campus, I, I participated in a campus-wide learning outcomes writing assessment last year and one of the biggest takeaways um, for those of us who did it was that a well-designed assignment was far more likely to lead to well-designed papers. Um, and that was really illuminating. I mean, it was something we always suspected, but to be actually able to look at the assignments and the papers and assess them both w really told us a lot about um, the impact of assignment design. So, you know, we are, librarians are well-versed in what are good and bad research assignments. We know the best practices. We've seen a lot of you know, crash and burn research assignments where students come, you know, you get every student in the class coming to the reference desk in tears. Um, and I think we can really play a vital consulting role to make sure that assignments are developmentally appropriate and are sufficiently detailed and scaffold information literacy skills, scaffold the development of research skills. Um, so we could play a really important role in that. Um, a similar project um, that offered support and workshops around assignment design um, happened at UC Berkeley and was funded by a Mellon grant. That actually resulted in significant improvement of student research skills and critical thinking. In surveying classes led by faculty participants um, and surveying classes that were led by faculty who did not participate in the workshops, Berkeley researchers found that 50% more students classified themselves as having improved significantly in library research skills, and 58% more students improved in analytical and critical thinking skills than the students in classes led by non-participant faculty. Um, Berkeley researchers also found that well-designed research assignments greatly improve students' sense of self-efficacy, which is actually a really important element in retention. Students who think that they are capable of doing well in school are more likely to actually stay in school. So that's really important. So at Portland State, um, we have really, I and, and um, the distance learning librarian have worked really hard to develop strong relationships with the um, university's Center for Online Learning, which is now called the Center for Academic Innovation. Um, but they're the group that work with faculty to build online courses. And in the summer of 2012, they had developed this thing called the Advanced Design Process, where they were going to work with certain departments that had a lot of online courses to support the faculty in taking a course from learning outcomes to a finished product um, online. So we were lucky enough to get involved in this process. 
which was fantastic. And we worked with faculty both on um, using library um, materials in their classes. My, the distance learning librarian covered that part using library materials, using free materials online, copyright issues, permalinking, etc. Um, and I covered research assignment design. And we created a research guide that would go along with this, and that's what you're seeing on the screen right now. <coughs> Excuse me. And what I covered was best practices in research assignment design. Um, and I can actually share the link um, to this with the class so you can see my slides. You can see some of uh, the rubric um, for assignment design. This was not something that we created, but Grand Valley State University's library created this great rubric for faculty assigning research, assi er, assigning research um, to see what the best practices are and how their assignments stand up to that. And um, that was actually based on a really great research study that Project Information Literacy did. And I know we saw one of their studies before. This was one on research handouts and what was in them and what wasn't. And it was really interesting. And that rubric is based on it. So we provided this support. And then afterwards, worked with faculty individually on their online classes if they needed additional assistance from the library. It was a really great opportunity to get involved with faculty as they're creating their courses, as they're creating their assignments, to really influence what they're doing. And um, we've been able to continue working with the Center for Online Learning, now the Center for Academic Innovation, um, on other um, faculty training exercises, and it's been really fantastic. And we've used this model over and over again. So there are a lot of librarians who make the argument that librarians should be the only ones teaching information literacy. But given the number of librarians that exist versus students at most institutions, it's completely impractical. Um, you know, and as we saw in the Ithaca study, 50% of faculty think that they are the primary instructors of information literacy, which actually I think is great. And I would love to see it be 100% because honestly, they're the people who are with the students the most. They are with them day after day. They build the strong relationships. I've often wondered, um, you know, we, we talk, we look, we, talk about the problems with the one chat, but I think one of the biggest problems with it is the students are coming in often to the library, which to the library's classrooms, which are an unfamiliar space. They have an unfamiliar instructor teaching them. And I wonder what the impact of that is of having somebody that they don't know covering um, covering the material than what it then you know, if they had their instructor covering that exact same material, would it be more easily, more readily absorbed? I don't know that that's true, but there has been research. Um, Constance Mellon did some interesting um, research where she did what's called a warmth session, where she kind of came into the class for just a little while to put sort of put a friendly face on the library, um, get get to know the students, say hi. Etc., and then came back again to do an actual information literacy session. And she found that students actually learned a good deal more when they had the warmth session first because then the person coming in was familiar, they knew her to some extent. I think that kind of does support the idea that if we don't already have those relationships, um, it can, you know it can be problematic and that maybe the instructor or the TA or whoever might be the better person to be doing that teaching. Um, at my institution, we were looking for ways to influence our freshman inquiry program more to have more, more to do more instruction without doing more instruction, because at the same time, we were being told that we were actually doing too much instruction in freshman inquiry by our, um, by our administration. So we, we were looking at ways to increase our impact without increasing our instruction. And a train the trainer approach seemed like the perfect way to approach this. So what we did first was we built a bunch of 
learning objects and learning activities that faculty could easily or or um, or peer mentors. These classes had um, had um, upper division undergrad students who also um, provided instruction in the classes. So we provided these tools for them that they could easily use in the class and then also were involved in um, the peer mentor training where we got them up to speed with how they can support students. Um, and we also went to the um, freshman inquiry faculty retreat to introduce our new model and how we could support them. We also offered to work with mentors or faculty individually to help design lesson plans, to create online course guides to support the class. And this thus far has been very successful. We've heard anecdotally that lots of the mentors and faculty are using um, our resources. We've We've worked individually with a lot of faculty and mentors um, to great success, and it's been just a wonderful experience where we didn't necessarily increase the instruction that we did, but we did increase our impact, which was wonderful. Um, so here are some things to consider when you are trying to get involved in this kind of foundational um, embedment. So, as I mentioned, it's pretty rare that faculty are going to consider librarians a natural partner in course and assignment design. Um, like I said in the last lecture, you know, sometimes the key is to work with the low-hanging fruit. So see about partnering with faculty who do think of you that way, or see how you can get faculty to see you that way. Um, I started offering workshops on research assignment design um, just so that faculty would start to think of librarians as people who could help with those things. And this was just workshops that basically were exactly what I offered in the, um, in the advanced design process, but they were for anyone who wanted to come. And like all faculty workshops, we didn't get a ton of people showing up, but I think it was still worth doing because it's just, you know, over time you can get you can change people's thinking about the library, but it takes a long time of continually being there, being available, and and modeling the kind of behavior um, that you want them to think you can do. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely a key is keeping aware of what's happening in your departments. Um, when you hear about things like a curriculum review or you're, somebody's redesigning the research methods course or a bunch of new classes are going online, those are golden opportunities to get involved. And recently I learned that um, some of our, some of the um, classes in anthropology, one of my liaison areas, were going online and I was like, ooh, I would love to be involved with whatever training is going on with them with the Center for Online Learning. So I did get involved in that and it was great. Um, you know, like I said, building strong relationships with faculty is really key. If faculty don't know you and believe you are competent and wonderful and amazing, they're not going to work with you on this. And you know, just be willing to think outside of the box. Um, you know, librarian, I mean, not, well, librarians and, fac and faculty alike can sometimes get stuck in thinking of what we can do as just, oh, we can go in and teach to this class, or we can teach a bunch of sessions to this class. There are so many different models for influencing student information literacy that actually don't even require us to teach or are in addition to us, us teaching a session. So really think outside of the box. I hate that term. I don't even know why I put it in here. But think outside of the traditional ways that we, that we provide instruction um, because there are a lot of options out there. All right, well, I hope you enjoy your readings this week, and um, I look forward to hearing your thoughts.